Georgetown. I'm Beverly Enos and this is Spotlight Georgetown. This comes to you as part of our community cable programs and if you'd like to be part of it, behind the scenes, behind the cameras, or out here in the, the hot seat with me, let me know and we'll make sure that it happens. If you'd like to see one of the shows that has been previously done, rerun, let us know. And don't forget to watch for town meetings and all of the other things that go on on our cable service. Now you can see us Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And quite often it, we throw a few more in even more than that. So tune in to your cable station and take a look and see what's going on. Now today we're going to be talking to Annie Rhodes and Annie is here to talk to us about people helping people. Welcome Annie. Hi, nice to be here. Now before we get started, you are not from Georgetown, I'm so when not. people say, I don't recognize <clears throat> that lady. Well, you know what? They might recognize me because I've lived, I've lived in North Andover for seven years, but I've worked in Georgetown for a couple of years. I used to work at St. Mary's at the church. I was the director of religious education, okay. and that's how I became involved in many of the groups that I'm with. Now, do you still work in Georgetown? No, I don't at this point. Okay. I, I'm staying home right now. So, all right. So, so, People Helping People is actually run through St. Mary's Church, but it is not just for not just for the, the Catholic church. church the church uh, covers a region uh, which is four towns Boxford Byfield Georgetown and Raleigh and people helping people covers that same region okay so this goes for all of the people that are that have need of a little bit of help now and then any families in need in that area mm -hmm. are eligible to give us a call and, and we'll put them on our roster now even when even before right now Georgetown is actually sharing a priest with Rowley. Well, we are one parish. We so used to be two parish. parishes, but now we are one parish. It's confusing because we were St. Mary's in Georgetown and we were St. Mary's in Rowley. And now we are St. Mary's Georgetown Rowley. And even when it was just Georgetown, we also covered other towns. Boxford, so, Byfield, and Georgetown. So this has always been kind of a community thing anyway. Absolutely. So the, the people pe helping people goes along in that same <clears throat> direction. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people think that people are helping people only becomes effective or, or active at Thanksgiving or Christmas or some such thing. That's not true. Well, we do our main focus, our main push is the three main holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter. Those are the times of year where we collect boxes and do our actual uh, organized donation. But we're available year round if a family finds themselves just in an emergency and they just need a box of food to get through the next couple of days or the next couple of weeks, we're available for that. So you have a food, it's not an open food pantry that people can go shop, but Correct. you do have a food pantry that if someone is in need, they can let you know. They can let us know, exactly. We don't run an open food pantry. Though. Okay. But they can, they can get food if they, if they need to. They just need to call us over at the rectory and let us know that um, they need some assistance and we'll take care of them. And people that would like to donate don't need to wait until Christmas, Thanksgiving, or Easter. Not at they all. can donate anytime. Anytime. Uh, anytime. We always will accept donations, food, cash, gift certificates. We, uh, we have a lot of needs and we'll take it year round. We do have a room in the church where we um, maintain our stores. Okay. A little, little pantry in there. little pantry in there, exactly. Where do the donations come from? Um, we get from a number of sources. Obviously, a big chunk of it's from our parishioners, uh, individuals and families within the parish. Um, many people who are not within our parish but live in the area do donate for us. Um, we've had uh, great success with organizations in town who run food drives for us. Weight Watchers, Curves have both run food drives for us. Um, the Scouts have run food drives, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Brownies, Cub Scouts, all four. Um, we've had different organizations around town who have both donated and organized for us. So, um, and plus individuals. Absolutely, Anybody individuals. Can Anyone, whether they're part of the parish or not. Now, who sponsors things like the Christmas gifts that get given out? Well, uh, in addition to our food boxes, each child uh, who's part of one of our families on our roster does get a Christmas gift. And we run an angel sponsoring program. We're just not large enough to do a general gift collection the way Toys for Tots or some of the larger groups do. So what we do is we ask individuals to come and say I'd like to sponsor a child and we assign them a child. And we say please purchase a gift for this child. Uh, we do pretty well with the younger kids. What we really need are more sponsors who are willing to take on our older kids, 12 to 17. Sometimes people have expectations. They think of these older kids as well. You know, they don't have the same thoughts about Santa Claus. They don't have the same ideas about what to expect. Maybe some of them are actually working at helping their families or maybe should be. But, you know, even as adults, we think of Christmas as a time of generosity and gift giving. And if we don't receive a gift, think about how isolated we would feel. These teenagers, if there's nothing available for them, if there's no gift that morning, 
they just feel pushed aside and isolated and forgotten. So we try really hard and we ask our sponsors to consider taking on a child in the 12 to 17 year old range. Now is there a cost <clears throat> limit that they put or a suggested limit? What or? we do is we try to make it really easy. We get each kid to give us a list of three things that they would like to receive or that they need. And we ask our sponsors to try to pick up at least one item from the list. But really the list is just to give you an idea of what those, that child's interests are, what they uh, would want. And so if you're shopping with your family, with your own kids, and you see something that looks appropriate, then go ahead, pick it up. You would be surprised a gift certificate to Best Buy or Sports Authority would go a long way towards helping these kids feel appreciated and loved. Yeah. And there's, there's always iTunes and all kinds of Absolutely. things that, that people can... Teens love gift certificates. Right. They really do. <laughs> they don't have to have something fancy to open up. Exactly. As long as when they open up, they're going to be able to use it. Exactly. And exactly. That, that does make a difference. Now, you have a... This is part of your, of your child adoption program. Uh, well, the, the Christmas gifts are part of our angel program. Okay, um, that's the angel program. That's the angel program. So what we really do is... At these three holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, each family gets a box, um, which would contain food, mostly non-perishables, cans, and boxes. They also get either a ham or a turkey, depending on the holiday, whichever mm -hmm. is appropriate for the holiday. Uh, they get gift certificates to pick up foods that we can't box, like milk and bread. And then depending on, again, the holiday, at Christmas time, each child will receive a gift. And at Easter, the uh, older kids get some chocolate, chocolate bunnies, and the younger kids get a little Easter basket with candy and you know, little toys, um, but just something to let them know that we're thinking of them and, and to make them feel special. Well, that's really neat. Yeah, this, this, there are so many times that those holidays, especially when you are in trouble. When, you know, when a need. family is trying to make it, they're trying to keep a roof over their head, they're trying to make sure the electricity stays on, Christmas gifts, Easter gifts, they're just not on the list sometimes. Now how do you get the turkeys and the hams and the larger things donated? It's it's all donation. Uh, we get quite a few uh, parishioners who will just tell us I'll supply this many or that many. A lot of people do give us cash and you know we tell them five dollars from this person, five dollars from that person, it adds up. It buys a couple of them buys us a turkey, a couple of them buys us a ham. Sometimes they add up and we make we uh, purchase the gift certificates that we give to the families. Small donations add up and they allow us to do big things. Okay. So it, there's nothing too small. No. Not now at you all. do have a child sponsor program. That's the Christmas gift. That's, That's the Christmas angel gifts. program. Okay. What um, What other ways can people help? Well, uh, the angel program is is our big one right now. But obviously, what we need is the food. Um, so we accept donations of non-perishable items. Um, if people are looking for a list of specific items, we have it in our church bulletin around each holiday, and you can always go online to www.stmaryparish.org and look at the archives of the bulletins and pull up that list. But honestly, if it looks okay. canned or boxed, we'll take it. Um, you know, we, we try to make sure that every family has a little of what they, of all the different things they need, but you know, if it's canned or boxed, we'll probably take it. Um, gift certificates, especially to supermarkets, are very important, and obviously cash. We'll take money anytime. Mm -hmm. So if, if people are shopping through the year, and they're making uh, pumpkin pies. There's no reason why they can't just pick up another can of pumpkin Absolutely. and throw it in, a, in a corner. And Absolutely. when the season comes around, they can, Even, they can bring it out. You know, we find a lot of people, they buy uh, birthday gifts at the beginning of the year. They know their child is going to be eight, and they're going to get invited to 10 eight-year-old birthday parties. So pick up a couple of extra gifts, and then at Christmas time, come and say, well, I'd like to sponsor an eight-year-old. And you have a gift on hand. Okay. You can wrap so if it you've up. got something in the house, you can... Do it backwards. Sure. A lot of people sponsor kids who are specifically their child's age and gender, so they know what those kids like. If your daughter is six, then you can sponsor a six-year-old, and you have a pretty good idea of what that six-year-old is into. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, it's it's amazing as different as children can be, they still like the same basic <clears throat> types of things. Right. Now, we know that this is kept private. Absolutely. So that the families, no one knows who the families are. All of the recipients, their names are anonymous and their privacy is absolutely respected. It's not released to anybody. We are very lucky that we have the Knights of Columbus who donate their time and labor. Uh, ours is Council 6064, based here in Georgetown, and they do all the deliveries. So to be honest, I have you know helped out with people helping people for six and a half years now, and I have never seen the address of any of our recipients. So, and it's not that nobody trusts me, it's just that we don't release them unless they need to be released to So if people to need deliver. help, they can feel comfortable going. Absolutely. Give us a call. And 
just call the call just the call parish, parish 352-2024. Uh, Okay, and just let them know that they need to be put on the list. And that then, they'd like to be put on the people helping people list. I have some friends that are in the Knights, and last year I was serving Thanksgiving dinner, I believe, mm -hmm. for the seniors. And it was, you know, would you like to come and help? And it's like, mm, sorry, we're delivering boxes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they were doing the deliveries for angels. the people helping people the Saturday before. Yes. Which is really nice. The Knights are the strong right arm of the church, and they help in so many ways. Now, in the past, who has traditionally helped meet your goals? Lots and lots of people. Obviously, parishioners, local people, uh, organizations around town like the Knights, like the JCs, the Georgetown Women's Club, the Women's Club, the Scouts. Women of today used to do some things. They used yeah. to, exactly. Um, you know, we've had lots of good uh, support from good, uh, good organizations around town. Uh, sometimes some of the local stores will chip in and get us a couple of gift certificates. Um, you know, the, the need is, is really high, but so has the support been. So it's been a good experience for a lot of people to have, you know, that opportunity to help out. So if you were to make a list of what you generally need in the order of preference, what would it be? Uh, food is always high on the, the list because that's what we are trying to give people is food. Um, gift certificates. And that would be staples that kind of that everybody would that eat. Everybody you don't want uses. to take the strangest thing that's on right. your in your pantry for two years and bring it in. Exactly, a lot of people do that. They do the clean out of the pantry and you know, we'll take that, but um, we need to make sure it is not expired. And what we're really looking for are the staples, spaghetti sauce, bisquick, flour, rice, you know, real staples, pasta, okay. beans, the, the things that everybody needs that's gonna give us a lot of nutritional value. And they could feed a lot of people. And that they can feed a lot of people. Well, um, and a little then, jar of artichoke hearts is no, not first on the list. Okay. I mean, you know, it's a nice little treat, but it's not our high priority. Yeah. Um, and then the second is cash or gift certificates, uh, especially to supermarkets, because we do need to make sure that, especially families with young kids, that they get items that we can't supply like milk. So if, if people want to, by cash, you mean cash or checks? Cash or checks, actually. In fact, it doesn't have to be cash. We have our parish pay program. You can go online, www.parishpay.org, I believe. <laughs> and um, you can make online donations. You can, With a credit card? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. It's a, a new program that's been at the parish for, uh, oh, under, I guess about a year now. Um, and you can absolutely, at any time, you can make a cash donation. You can set it to do an automatic withdrawal. You can do a one-time cash donation. Uh, right from your bank account, uh, you know, so it looks like a check. It's, it's very easy. You can always mail a check to St. Mary's. Uh, just address the envelope, people helping people. St. Mary Parish, 94 Andover Street in Georgetown. Okay. So there's lots of ways. Lots of ways. And if people need help, they just call the parish. 352-2024. Um, we, what we would probably do is take a name or number, and we get it to the person who handles putting people on the list. All right. Now, you're not from Georgetown, but you're part of the parish. And right. the other ladies that actually work with you <clears throat> couldn't be here because right. we do our tapings on Wednesday afternoon. A lot of us work, so. So there are some other people that. Um, Absolutely. There are other people that they can contact or? Best is to go through the parish. Okay. Uh, it's best to go through the actual, the 2024, which is our main rectory line, and that'll get you on the official list. And so we make sure that we have, you know, one list that's good that we know everybody who's on it. And we make sure we have enough boxes. Are you finding that as times get tougher, there are more families? You know, the economy is down, and when the economy is down, need is up. Uh, there's a lot of community need right now. Uh, many people don't realize what need there is. Georgetown is not really seen as an area that has a lot of poor. It's not always the people who are homeless. It's, it's often people you, you might see on the street who really need it. I got involved in this organization through just this most memorable moment. I was at the church working on something not related to people helping people at all. I was working on religious education, and a family came in. Uh, they were in need between the holidays, and they had this beautiful little girl who was about four or five, and uh, our parish secretary at the time, Nan Hadley, she's now our business manager. Then she was our secretary, I asked her, would you like a box of crayons? And you could see she wanted it so badly, and she said, no, thank you. And I couldn't understand why she would say no, but Nan understood. She got down and she whispered, these crayons are special, they come with paper. And then she nodded her head, thank you. And I thought, this is a family, they look like any other family, their kids are polite, they're clean, they're well-spoken but they are in need. They, this child doesn't even have paper or crayons to write with. How can you not respond to that kind of need in the community? Yeah, yeah. and your organization does it and has been doing it for years and years, years, and, and, years. and years and years. It started out in someone's home, uh, you know, so long ago that I don't even remember who started. Uh, I think I do. 
I'm not sure. So I'm not going to name names. But, but it I'm was definitely sure in someone's home when we started. Yeah. And then they, it kind of outgrew itself. So we found them uh, a room in the church. <clears throat> and when that particular family left, a woman named Tony Knott took it over mm -hmm. for a while. And then uh, when she left, the Orals, uh, you know, it, it's gone through a number of iterations. And someone has always stepped forward to manage it. Now, if someone <clears> has <throat> things like they want to buy turkeys or, or something that needs refrigeration, how would they go about that? That's well, a little different. Yeah, that is. We ask you to give us a call because what we'll probably do is either ask for a gift certificate so we can get it or we ask for a specific delivery date. Okay. Uh, it's really important that we make sure things that are perishable, like the turkeys and the hams, come on the right day so that they don't arrive on Thanksgiving morning frozen. frozen. <laughs> or six weeks early, fresh, right. <laughs> thawed, you right. know. Um, those, please do contact us. Don't just show up with 15 turkeys that then we're, we haven't planned on because we'll have waste then, and we don't want that. Yeah. So if they want to drop off boxes of food, how do they do that? Uh, anytime the parish is open, which is most days from 9 to 1, they can just bring it over, ring the doorbell. We'll, uh, it's actually, the room is sort of around the back, so we'll say, you know, go back in your car and go around back, but you have to let us know to open the door. Um, and if... If it's not between 9 and 1, give a call between 9 and 1 and say, hey, I'd like to come over, but I work, and I can only get there after 6. And we'll say, okay, well, here's a day when someone will be here. Okay. And we'll make an appointment. All right, so they can actually mm -hmm. physically drop off boxes of food and things like that yes, themselves. Yes, absolutely. What we ask is that you don't just drop it off. Uh, without telling at, you. Without telling us and leave it down there because we may not see it. Um, right. You know, if, if we all walk out the front door and we don't go down the back, we just won't see it. Yeah, and there are critters are around. Yeah. <laughs> We, we don't want to encourage those kind of... No. Is there <laughs> anything that I've missed? I don't think so. It's, you know, it's a big group, but um, it, there's a lot of need in the community. We just ask people, think about it long and hard, pray about it if it's your inclination, and we're very, very grateful for whatever help we can get. Um, we've had a lot of good help, so many organizations, and, and we thank them, but really it's the individuals who keep this program running. It makes a difference. They really it do. It really does. And in a town like Georgetown, we've got the people. Yes, and it's a great learning opportunity for your kids to, you know, bring them along, show them what you're doing, show them the items when you, you're in your grocery store, you know, each week, make it a habit, pick up an item, and then once a month, bring them all in. Um, there's a box actually in the back of the church, so if you come to St. Mary's on a given Sunday, you can just drop it off in the box on your oh, way good. in. Okay. Yeah. And again, the big times that we think about are the Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter. But in reality, there are families that are in trouble all year round. All year round, yes. And, and we there is do... food going out all year round. And in fact, one of our needs is after every holiday, our shelves have been cleared, and then we have to build up our stocks. So, you know, the week after Thanksgiving or the week after Christmas or the week after Easter, we're still looking for supplies. So, so when the stuff goes on sale, buy it then. Buy it then. Okay. Bring it over. All right. Well, thank you very much thank for coming. You thank for you, Thank you, And people helping people. If you find a way that you can possibly give a donation, either in items, um, in cash or a check, or go online and see who you can help here in Georgetown. Thank you for joining us. You can catch us Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. I'm Beverly Enos. Bye for now.